This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Tuesday, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. We're always presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hey, you're gathering your shoes for uh, this week for Gideon George. I'm so excited about this. Friday night, Gideon George, finally we're going to be able to do this officially, right? Um, he's, been, he's been donating shoes back to uh, men in Nigeria, where he's from, which is so cool. He wore shoes from someone who donated them growing up. Now Friday, before the San Diego State game, San Diego State in town Friday, massive game, that'll be awesome. You can bring um, shoes to the game, newer, lightly used shoes, also backpacks, or used computers to be donated to Nigeria. So that's Friday at the Marriott Center, okay? I'm sure we can figure out ways if you can't make it to the game that you, and you still want to donate, uh, we'll figure that out, right? Reach out to me, Spence, we'll figure that out, how to get it to him. But uh, this is Friday, and it's going to be great. What a great cause to, uh, you know, the future Gideon Georges of the world, getting some shoes or backpacks or... Yeah, so it. it's expanded beyond just shoes. Yeah, it's not just shoes, yeah. What an incredible effort by Gideon George. Again, you can bring them Friday night, huge basketball matchup. Speaking of, today's show lineup, basketball-centric, because it's the basketball season opener for the regular season. Yeah, baby. All of our season projections coming up. Plus, we're not forgetting about BYU football on selection, well, at least – the poll Tuesday when the college football playoff projections are released. Isaiah Kafusi and Keanu Hill will join us. And it's tournament time for BYU women's soccer. They got a seed. Way better than I thought. That's awesome. Bring on today's BYU Sports Station headlines. It's a ball night. First one of the season in the Marriott Center tonight. Women's hoops tips off the season versus Lipscomb. 6 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Then the men play Horizon League champs Cleveland State. 10 Eastern an hour later than normal. Which brings us to the stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU and Cleveland State is one of five games on this opening night of NCAA Hoops featuring two teams that were in the NCAA tournament okay. last year. Horizon right. League champs for Cleveland State. Don't Cover. we have a Horizon League championship t-shirt from somebody? We do, Valparaiso. But they're no Which, longer in the Horizon League? Are they not? Did they move? <laughs> I don't know where they went. Uh, are they still there? Uh, by the way, T. John Lucas has played like five games against them State. Okay. He was in the Horizon League with Milwaukee. He's got the scouting report. Uh, T. John Lucas went for like 31 in a game against Cleveland State. So, FYI. Coverage begins with countdown to tip off 9:30 Eastern, same time as BYU Radio's Cougar pregame live as well, and then of course the game. After. How about a brand new bracketology from Joe Lenardi just in time for the season opener? BYU seventh to last in, and one of the last four teams to receive a bye. They are currently a 10 seed taking on USC, BYU 40th overall out of 358 Division I teams. No surprises, the Zags, the number one overall seed. They've got three top 20 NBA prospects. St. Mary's also win the WCC a three-team or three-bid league with the Gales coming in as an 11 seed. Valparaiso is in the Missouri Valley now, by the way. Football has a bye week after 10 straight weeks of games. BYU's number 14 in the AP poll. We'll see what the Cougars are in tonight's uh, second college football playoff ranking. Also, Jaron Hall is the Independent Offensive Player of the Week by College Sports Madness uh, after having a tremendous first half against Idaho State. I cannot wait to not announce Independent Offensive Players of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> so, something from the Big I've, 12. I've been done with that for years. We're getting Big 12 emails, and it's just nice yeah, to get those, it's, right? It's nice. Even though BYU is not technically involved right now. BYU Women's Volleyball moves up a spot, or rather, the number four seed in the women's soccer tournament. Hey, Jaron, they're gearing up for a home game against New Mexico of all teams. Mm -hmm. There's some history there. I don't know if we'll show that, but there's some history there. From the mountain. I was in the truck working, My the, working the bug on that. Cameron Tucker won the West Coast Conference Offensive Player of the Week award. Cassidy Smith, your defensive player of the week for an outstanding effort in front of the net. Women's volleyball moves up spots number five in the ABCA poll. The Cougars' highest of the season and since 2018 when BYU got as high as number one. Cougars host Pepperdine Thursday on the BYU TV app, 9 Eastern time. That's a big game. Pepperdine has been in and out of the top 25 all year. And finally, BYU men's golf teeing off on the first round yesterday at the St. Mary's Invitational tie for 12th place at two over par. 
Carson Lundell, Cole Ponich, both shot one under par with Tyson Shelley shooting even par. Second round just getting underway. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. It is time we make our 2021 2022 season basketball projections, Jerem, led off by who's going to get the most buckets for BYU basketball. So points per game, we're saying uh, Alex Barcelo. Last year, he was 16.1. I think he goes up to 17.3 this year. A little more, second senior year, fifth year in college hoops. Um, I think Tijon Lucas will find him a little more than Brandon Averett did. And, uh, yeah, 17.3, man. Okay. I also like Alex Barcelo. And uh, I like him too. Truth be told, I did not see what you had projected. I went with 17.7. So a a little bit over that. Nice. But two white dudes from Utah thinking the same. (laughs) Okay. Who will be the Cougars' leading rebounder? Caleb Lohner is going to be the guy. Amen. He'll have several occasions where he's in double figures rebounding. Uh, I said eight and a half a game. I go 7.9. Yeah. We're along the same lines. Mine's probably a little bit aggressive there. He should be, no. I think that's good. I think it's good. We're only point six difference. Um, he he's the best rebounder on the team, and you know we're we're still waiting to see like, hey, is Richard Harward like is he, is he good okay? after last yeah. Thursday? Um, the, the exhibition. Hopefully he is, but no one rebounds better than Caleb Lohner. What would how would that sound from Bill Walton again? There has never been a greater rebounder in the history of college basketball in the state of Utah than one Utah. Caleb Lohner and Tom Chambers. Yes. <laughs> All right, (laughs) from rebounding and uh, points per game to three-point shots. 3YU was a thing at BYU a couple of years ago. Yeah, I love the nation, man. Who's going to lead the team in three-point makes? I think uh, the Russian Alexi Barcelo will do it. It's hard to go away from Alex. It is. I'm going to go 59. I increased his number from 53 makes from last year. BYU's going to play a handful more games, right? They had two weeks delayed because of COVID last year um, for – no good reason they could have played if they won. Um, yeah, 50, 59. I think he'll make a few more. Uh, same ideology based on the fact that BYU is not going to have to miss games because of COVID-19. We hope not anyway. Right, that they will play no the, entire, no, the entirety, no, 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 entirety no of the schedule. We're good. And uh, I see Alex making between two and three a game, so I went with 65 overall. Nice. 65 makes. Okay. Who will lead the team in three-point percentage? We finally have a different person on this one. I went off the board a little bit here. Who did you have? Alex, 46%, which is really high, but he's been so good. Yeah. He's been shooting like 50% from the three-point La- line. Last year was 47.7. Okay. So you think he's going to have a down year. Crazy. Um, Just kidding. Trevin <laughs> Nell, and I go right at 45, which is what he was last year. He was 45.3. I don't think people realize Trevin Nell shot 45% from 45%. three last year. 45%? I mean, dude, dude needs to shoot more. That's what I say. Well, you, you he shot a you, shot in the offseason, got married, and uh, here we are. You say you went off the board? I, I, that, hey, listen. Off the might, board meaning not Alex. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. Trevin, yeah. Trevin might shoot 50% from the three-point line he, this he year. Might. His coaches think that he's he might, fully yeah. capable of doing that. Yeah. All right. One of our favorite categories. Who's going to lead this BYU basketball team in fouls? Listen, this is going to be awesome. Uh, last year it was Caleb Lohner. I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> Caleb Lohner is going to have 67 oh, fouls this year. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I'm going with our boy. Richard Harward. That's a good guess. He's okay, Richard Harward, More 71 PT. fouls yeah. for Richard Harward. More PT. Yeah, who who will lead in disqualifications? I mean, <laughs> you fell out. You know, probably one the of those. The Nate Austin guys. Award. The Nate Austin Award, yep, right. Yep. What will BYU's final regular season record be? This is the question of quite well, the question of questions is NCAA tournament. And okay. Season, but what's the record going to be in 31 games? Uh, 25 and 6. 25 and yeah, 6 let me is get my, nice, Let me get my dude. blue goggles out, right? Do you think that's blue goggles? Well, maybe tell me not, the I, tell me the losses right now okay, on the schedule. So maybe Oregon, right? I, I think if you had to pencil in losses, San Diego State is a question mark. At or, Utah's or, tough, th- tough, but that's going to be think a win. That's a win, right? Um, Creighton, I would pen- like if I had two pencil in losses. Maybe in Creighton, Dakota, right? Yeah, Creighton, yep. Maybe one at the Diamond Head. Okay, there's what three or so four? Three in the non. And then in league, you just pencil in Gonzaga. If you win that, that's amazing, right? Right. If you win that, that's amazing. So there's there's your six, right? Yes, and I, th- I think that that's because Ken Palm says BYU is going to win 20 or 21 games because he has San Francisco so high oh, in the ratings. Oh, San Francisco is <laughs> right? so great. We've, what has San Francisco times, done besides Bill Russell? How many times have we seen this Bill from Cartwright. San Francisco? Yeah. 
Like, oh, they're really good. They they might they might what be are the they second gonna best do? team in the West Coast they, Conference. They haven't made the NCAA tournament since '98, Kenneth. What yeah. are they, they don't even make the NIT. Twenty five and come six. on, man. This BYU team is fully capable yeah. of only losing two games in the non conference and then four in conference. If they lose three non con, four in conference. Yeah. Whoa. If they go two losses non con but four in conference, something bad happened. You think? Yes. Because to me, yeah. We I don't. Mean, there's always a Saint weird Mary's game is the at question. Pepperdine. At there San wasn't Francisco. last year. Under under Mark Pope, there's they lost. They lost that Pepperdine. Pepperdine was one twelve. That okay. was a quad so two. That qualify that, as a weird loss. Weird to me is quad three four. Okay. Or or I I could see the argument from Cougar fans saying anything but Saint Mary's Gonzaga is a weird loss. I would argue no. There's one allowed a year, where it's weird. Meaning. It's what one of those other teams. Like, if BYU loses a quad three or four, that's terrible. Yeah, that means so Pepperdine rough. at home. That means Portland any time, okay. right? Like, that's bad. So, yeah. The committee th- didn't look at Pepperdine as a, as bad a weird loss, loss or okay. bad loss. So, maybe yeah. what if BYU loses at San Francisco? That's not a bad loss. And then they lose to St. Mary's once and lose to Gonzaga twice. There are four conference losses. There are four. Right. But if they went two non-con losses only, that's pretty good. Yeah, That BYU would be 13-2 and two and probably like 20 20- Second in the country. Or this, I feel like this team's loaded. I feel like they're loaded. I feel like they're similar to last year, and I have questions. I have questions. Like, is T. John Lucas going to be better than Brandon Averett? I think he will be. Will the combination of Richard Harward and Gavin Baxter be better than Matt Harms? Okay. I'm not sure yet. Like, I need to see that part. That's my biggest question mark is because the moment Richard Harwood went out, that was trouble for BYU. BYU was not deep at that particular position on the court. Okay. I say 24 and 7. I just have one more loss there. I'm thinking 11 and 4 non con, okay. 13 and 3 conference. That's All right. Thinking. Yeah. And I essentially said uh, 13, or sorry, 12 and 3 in non con and 13 and 3 in conference. Right? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Let's, let's go, man. Let's go. Let's get it done. How many St. Zaga wins will be involved in BYU's either 24 overall or, if you're me, 25 total wins? Well, we're including the uh, WCC tournament in this Correct. projection. Um, okay, for those new to the program, welcome, first off. Mm-hmm. All visitors, welcome. Uh, and uh, we call St. Mary's and Gonzaga St. Zaga. We've just combined the names. We don't like saying three words. We only like saying two. So I say three. I think I think BYU gets St. Yes. Mary's twice, and then probably St. Mary's again in the WCC tournament. Maybe would, Gonzaga once. I would love to have one Gonzaga in there somewhere. I don't expect it. When it happens, it's a awesome surprise. Maybe Gonzaga once. Okay. Next question. What now, did you think? Uh, I'm going to three. three. Exactly okay. the same. Okay. Yeah. I, whether it's a combination of two against St. Mary's and one against Gonzaga. Uh, maybe. So, so what my thinking was, okay, BYU gets St. Mary's at least once in the regular season. They face them again in the tournament in that 2-3 game. And then BYU gets mm-hmm. another shot at Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference title game. Yeah. Okay, so three total. All right, how many non-St. Zaga losses will BYU suffer? In, in WCC in w- play? Uh, one. Just one other one. San Fran, Pep. I don't know. Not going to be Pep. Pep's not as good. Yeah. See, in Pep lost two. two so, Colby Ross and Kessler Edwards are gone. So the more that I think about this, I put down two, but I don't know the BYU can can afford two non St. Zaga losses if, they're if going they want 20, to go twenty five and six. Right, right. I bet it's one. But typically, other than last year, BYU has had a couple of these losses every season. Did they win two years ago? I don't think they did. Right. I think they they came away pretty unscathed two years ago. Okay. I I think under Mark Pope things are different. I do. It's it's not the same. So I don't maybe think it's one. The same. So have we like? I okay, think one. One is fair. One. Is fair. one I know Cougar fans don't want a single that we're better than everybody. One basketball game. One basketball game. You can't, you play three times as many as football, okay? One weird loss. Okay, you've convinced me. The Mark one. In fact, I'm going to amend that. One. I'm okay. going to amend it. Okay, one non well, Sweet, Zaga that's loss, a draw. Okay? We just delete that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. If they have two, I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, I knew they lose another one. All right. Jerem, on to the net ranking. Yeah. Uh, which is like 17 million times better than the RPI. <sighs> feel bad for all the other sports I have to deal with RPI stuff. What will BYU's best win be by net ranking? I go 23. Last year was 18, by the way, San Diego State. That was a great win on the road. I'll go 23. I'm not sure who. I'm not sure when. Yeah, Maybe, I, it's, Saint Ma- maybe it's St. Mary's who has a great year. Maybe it's Creighton or something. Oregon. Sure. For no rhyme or reason other than I love the number 21, I went with 21. <laughs> now, if one of us had said one, that would have meant we—that th- would have meant we thought they'd be a Gonzaga. 
Uh, should one of us be that Just brash? Should we one? throw on the blue goggles and put down number one? Listen, I, I'm in the. If BYU does that, I, I'll be. Uh, that I'll be so happy. I'm not going to expect it per se, but if it happens, it'll be great. Okay. What will be BYU's worst net ranking loss? Uh, 100 even, and okay. I think it's probably going to be whoever the non Saint Zaga. Well, maybe not. See, San Francisco, we'll see what they are. Maybe San Francisco is not as great as everybody thinks they are, and they drop down to, like, in the 90s. Or LM, maybe it's LMU. We'll okay, see. I say 120. The worst was 110 to Pepperdine last year. Okay, highest ranking in the AP poll during the season. 21. I love that. I, I'm going with 23. Okay, and NCAA tourney seed? Six seed, okay. third year in I'd a row. I'd say seven. seven. Third year in a They're 25 well, and six. They should be a six seed. Depends what the wins are. <laughs> and the losses, right? Maybe yeah. maybe I should change my best win by net ranking to number one, and then they'll be a six seed. <laughs> then they'll be a five. <laughs> yeah. Our question of the day. Which team will end the season ranked higher, BYU basketball oh. or BYU football? Oh, shoot. Okay. Let's hear from you, BYU SN and Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. At Pask underscore Pask BYU on Twitter says football, not only because they have a legitimate chance at winning out, but because in basketball, there are nearly three times as many schools and it's harder to get into the top 15 hashtag BYUSN. Yeah, no, it's a great point. I think it's going to be hard to beat what football is doing. Unless yeah. football loses to USC and then loses a bowl game, which would be, oh, brutal. Yeah, finished ranked. True, true, true. Coming up. Have we seen Neil Pau in a BYU jersey for the last time? And former BYU linebacker Isaiah Kafusi joins us. What advice does he give the team as they try and run the table and crack into the New Year's Six? This is BYU Sports Nation. Yeah! This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Kalani Stake leading the band. Cougar fight song after the game. If one coach is good, two is better, by the way. Watch last night's combo coaches show. Kalani Stake, Mark Pope on the BYU TV app on demand. It was a great show. That was fantastic. And uh, one of the BYU viral moments was Mark Pope talking about Kalani Sitake and the reason he's so successful and the love that his players feel for him. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Gideon George was on. Kyle Griffiths and his newly shorn head was on. It was great. All right. We're hanging out live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. It is our pleasure now to welcome in former BYU linebacker great Isaiah Kafusi. Let's yeah. talk some football, Isaiah. I mean, assuming you want to Let's with the it. Cougars ranked number 14 in the AP poll, we're waiting to see what they're in the college football playoff poll. But you cool if we talk football? Hey, let's do it, man. I love it. I love talking football. <laughs> okay, just a season removed for you from your BYU career, but you're watching BYU football get back to where you were last year in the middle of the college football playoff poll. What has impressed you most about this team that makes them maybe different than the team you were on last year? I just think it's just the guys stepping up. Um, you know, a lot of lot of voids coming out, you know, this year and a lot of question marks, I think, around how guys were going to respond. Um, so just, I, I just think the biggest thing is just the guys that have stepped up, um, the leadership, and, and just people, you know, stepping up into roles that I think, you know, maybe we're are, are pushing it, you know, getting out of their comfort zone, and just really excited for the guys, really proud of the guys, what they've done so far. Defensively, let's look at that end because uh, that's where you played. Uh, BYU has been better than I think people think. Some people get frustrated over certain things. Uh, obviously, you know, gave up 49 to Virginia. Second half was amazing um, against Power 5 teams outside of Virginia. It was like giving up like 21 a game. What have been your thoughts about the defense so far this season? Yeah, really proud of the defense. I think they've really stepped up. Um, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of some of the schemes that we run. But I, I'm a big fan. Um, the drop eight, I think, was was what won us the game against Virginia. Um, big fan of the drop eight um, when it's used and you know correctly. I think it it uh, the fans don't necessarily like it as much, but I think it does. Um, you know, it, it does have its its time and place, and I think you know it obviously it creates turnovers and um, two forced turnovers, and that the end of that game was key. So really proud of the defense though and what they're doing. You know, I, I think. 
a lot of guys have stepped up and there's some names up there that people probably don't really recognize as much, but um, a lot of them are stepping up. So it's really fun to see them. Yeah, let's not overlook the fact that BYU is without Keenan Peely and on the outside in the secondary without Keenan Ellis. I mean, those are two massive injuries early in the season. Focusing on Keenan Peely, specifically at the linebacker position, what does a player like Keenan Peely mean to this BYU team and then to have the team rally around the fact that he's not there? Yeah, I think he's a a really solid component of the defense. And he just brings the, you know, that energy, the leadership. He, I mean, he's a fighter. He will fight to the end. Uh, he, he gives everything he's got. He lays his, his body on the line as we have seen. Um, and, and so I think, you know, m- missing him has been, you know, he is a missing piece and it's been felt. His presence has been, um, you know, his, I guess has been felt. Um, but I, I think, you know, a lot of guys have just stepped up guys. You know, that's kind of how we, how we roll in the BYU defense. Uh, it's the next man up mentality. The coaches do a great job at, you know, helping guys kind of step into those roles and, and uh, you know, really, really just proud of the guys that have stepped up um, in, in Keenan's absence. I think, you know, obviously it is felt, but um, just, just really proud of the guys for stepping up. It's not bad when you have a walk on middle linebacker like Ben Bywater doing work. He's he's been tremendous in the middle there making plays. On Friday, uh, getting ready for the game broadcast, we talked to some of the coaches and Elias Tuyaki. I asked him about kind of these line changes, almost like hockey, right? You're having like the whole D line and the yeah. whole linebackers coming in. It's kind of unique. He said he started that at Utah. And then I asked him kind of what the motivation <laughs> is there, and he said that he would rather have a backup at 100% if the starter's at 80% in terms of fatigue. Can you kind of walk us through what it was like as a player to manage that? Because at first you kind of want continuity, but then you realize, well, logistically, you have a fresh body out there. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something um, that's that's sort of unique to BYU is kind of that line, those line changes. Um, and, and as a player, you know, sometimes it can be frustrating because you want to get into a groove. But then, you know, as I matured, I realized that the backups are just as prepared um, and just as, as capable and able as the starters. And so, you know, it, it takes some humbling and just kind of, that's kind of the part, the buy-in part is you've got to be able to trust people uh, and trust your backups and, and trust the guys rotating in um, that they're going to play hard and, and that they deserve, you know, an, an opportunity and a shot and um, that they're going to make plays too. So I think it's, I think we've proved that, you know, the backups can make plays, you know, we saw Drew Jensen in there, um, you know, snagging a pick and getting himself his hands on the ball, which is awesome. And so um, definitely I'm a fan of kind of, you know, letting guys get in and fresh bodies get in to make some plays. And then going into the Big 12, obviously, uh, you know, Kalani Stake said when he started here, he saw the Power 5 stacked up at the beginning and thought, oh, I can't just start these 11 guys and have them in game 12. It's just not going to happen. They're going to get – injured a little more than, say, you know, the previous schedules that maybe BYU had played. So going into the Big 12, BYU probably needs three deep. Kalani Stocky told Dave McCann two weeks ago, hey, I need 123 starters. So what kind of depth is reason, uh, you know, reasonable to think and expect that BYU can get going into the Big 12? Yeah, I agree with Klein. I think, um, you know, you got to have two or three guys ready to go. Um, and, and, you know, Kalani – He's, he's all business. So if there's, if a guy's not playing well uh, and someone's hot, then, you know, he'll put them in and he doesn't care if you're a walk on, um, if you're a transfer or where you're from, you know, if you can come in and produce and make plays and, and do your job, um, I think he's proven that you'll get on the field. So, um, you know, I definitely do think going into the big 12, there's going to be a lot of changes, um, you know, speed and physicality are a big part of that. Um, conference. And so I think, you know, we're, we're going to need to get 123 guys um, who, who are going to be able to play special teams, offense, defense, all three phases um, need to be ready to go. Isaiah Kafusi, former BYU linebacker, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Just a season ago, you lived the life in the college football playoff poll. BYU entered at number 14. You were undefeated. The spotlight was really bright. And here we are again, BYU number 15 right now. We'll see where they are tonight. But how much do the players, now that you're graduated and that you've moved on, you can really, you can let down the wall, you can tell us, how much do the players really pay attention to the rankings? 
Um, I wouldn't say it's everything. Um, obviously we do pay attention and, you know, the last few years, I guess, um, we've been kind of in the limelight. And so it's been nice to, you know, something that we haven't really been used to is, is being ranked and being talked about. And so I definitely think that that that's something that is, um, fun for the players to think about, you know, we're ranked and we're getting all this attention. And so, um, but I, I don't necessarily think that that's, um, all that the players are talking about, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, have goals and, and the players have goals and the team has goals, you know? And so I think, um, you know, there, there's other conversations around those goals. And so it's definitely fun though, to be ranked and to, you know, just be talked about. I mean, analysts and, and, uh, you know, people are, are really talking highly about BYU. And so it's always fun to see that and, and see us, you know, the recognition and, uh, the hard work that we've put in, you know, be recognized. I think that's nice. Have you thought about what it would have been like to play on this team or are you content with your life? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> um, I'm content. I'm very, I'm very content. I'm really happy with um, where I'm at and um, obviously, you know, miss it and miss, you know, football and miss the guys and the coaches and just the staff. But, you know, I, I've made the decision and, and I'm really happy with where I'm at. I've, I've got a beautiful wife and a, a loving son um, that keep me busy. And, uh, you know, I, I've done the best um, up to this point. I've given it my all, done everything that I could have, um, laid it all out there. And, you know, I, I feel good at work with where I'm at. What's next for you in your football career or your professional career for that matter? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I, still kind of just training and staying ready, you know, had a great preseason. And so got some good film out there and just, um, you know, staying ready, but, you know, I, I know that there's Kalani's always trying to recruit me to come coach and, um, would definitely love to, to look into that and, um, definitely would be a passion of mine. Mm. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We're, we're just kind of taking it day by day and I'm just enjoying some family time for now. I remember one game you coached. Do you remember that game? Oh, my goodness. He's bringing it up again, Isaiah. <laughs> hey, you know what? That was a great run. But, you know, I'm still – I'm still I'm, I still am mad about that. I know you are, dude. You know, when you look at me, I'm like, he's still thinking about it. Shoot. And I keep bringing it up. Yeah. Jaren, yeah. Jaren breaks Every day. Isaiah's Every flag day. football dreams. <sighs> Hail Mary. <laughs> well, Hail Mary. Hey, we were the underdogs, though. We were underdogs. I mean, the fact that we made it to the championship game – Make yourself feel was, better. That yep. was fun. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> no, was no one talks right, about right, Hail Mary right. defense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Isaiah. Hey, kudos uh, to you. That was, hey, that was a heads-up play. I, I pulled the flag like a foot short. Would, would be Hail Mary win for Isaiah's Woo! coach team. It, it just I got lucky. You know what? I was well coached. <laughs> we prepared well. We'd gone over that that week. <laughs> I love it. And now you got Jeremy and athletes speak. Isaiah, it's great <laughs> to talk with you, man. Uh, we wish you the best in whatever your endeavors include. If that's coaching football, BYU. Yeah, come awesome. back, dude. I would, we'd still hang out. It'd be great. Playing in the NFL, that's cool, too. But uh, we appreciate your time regardless. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's always good to come back, talk to you guys, and talk football. You bet. Isaiah Kafusi, former BYU linebacker with us on BYU he, Sports Nation. He's going to overcome that moment, right? Like, he's still dwelling on it a little bit when I bring it up. <laughs> but, like, I think he'll overcome that. I really do. I would love to ha- – I'm kidding. I would love to – monkey off his back when he's coaching his son's flag football team. <laughs> yes. He's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would love to have him as a GA here. Oh, that'd be great. Coach Kafusi. Can we please do that? Coach Isaiah Kafusi. I'd love that. Did that not just resonate with you when he said that? Yeah, I mean, like it, did, it did. I was like, ooh. I was like, oh, nice. Yep. yep. Coming up, Keanu Hill on why he knew he was blocking that punt on Saturday. And what mood will BYU fans, specifically football, be in tonight before the basketball game? Ooh. Here's looking at you, college football playoff committee. Gary. This is BYU Sports Nation. Gary, you dog. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. The ball night for men's basketball. The Cougars take on Horizon League champs Cleveland State. Tonight, watch or listen to pregame coverage on BYU Radio, BYU TV at 9.30 Eastern. And then uh, that's an hour later, by the way, than normal because women's hoops, doubleheader, let's go. Game is at 10 Eastern time. He is Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get whatever content you want from uh, our five social media platforms. You know where to find it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. It's all there. Let's whip it. 
Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Kalanai Sitake Who? says Neil Pau is highly doubt for the for the Georgia Southern game next week. Have we seen Neil Pau for the final time as a BYU Cougar? Unless BYU is playing in a bowl game in late December, then probably, which hurts my soul. Yeah, it hurt his foot and ankle too. Oh. Yeah, which is a real bummer. Um, yeah, Neil Pau is hurt. Hopefully he gets back you know, as soon as humanly possible because Neil is a good player. And hopefully he comes back next year. But if not... Neil was a tremendous receiver at BYU. Yeah, the, it hurts to think that, was that the last time we would see Neil Powell play for BYU? Yeah, and he has a tremendous story, kind of being the you know second or third wheel there many times, but playing like the number one receiver. Um, yeah. And then when the Pukas got healthy, what a tandem we have seen with Romney and the Nakuas and Keanu Hills emerging, which is great. All right, Jerem, speaking of more football, will BYU fans be happy or angry following the college angry. football playoff oh. poll? <laughs> Reveal tonight. Hopefully happy. I don't think it'll be worse than 15 from last week. No. I think it probably like 14 maybe. Yeah, in fact, so many teams above BYU lost and two teams just behind BYU lost. So I only see BYU with the ability to move up. But it's a just going to be or one two. Yeah. So four, 14, which I think you should be. Come on. 14 with two losses in the college football playoff BYU's poll? BYU's in the top 15. I'm mad. Are they jumping up? If they jump up yeah. a spot, they should be very happy. If they stay the same at 15, I could see some disgruntled fans, but they're going to jump up, I think. They'll be a disgruntled fan. Uh, who will be a BYU men's hoop's second leading scorer tonight? Oh, man. We're kind of assuming Alex Barcells is going like, yes, to lead the like Cougs he, like he's gonna be almost the guy, every game. Right? Yeah, we just gave you our projections. He's going to yeah. be the leading scorer, points per game. He's going to make a and ton then, of threes. I think the second choice is pretty obvious, too. I'm into T. John Lucas. You think it's T. John? Yeah, yeah. Just sheer number of minutes and played, and he's super efficient. Remember, he knows Cleveland State. He's yeah. he was in the same league the last two years. He knows these guys. He scored 31 in a in a game against the Vikings okay. last year. So I'm going to go off the reservation here. All right, uh, I'm going to say Caleb Loner. Oh, okay. Tonight, Caleb's going to score a little bit. Caleb, because he's been shooting a lot. He hasn't shot well in the blue and white game and in the exhibition. He doesn't shoot well to start years. Like, he shot 43% after yeah. starting 0-13 left. He'll turn a corner tonight. Caleb Lohner, second leading scorer. Tijan. Okay. Which BYU volleyball, okay, with BYU volleyball, rather, now ranked number five, mm. is this now the high point for that team, or does it get better? <sighs> I wonder if one of the four loses the next two weeks. There's only three games left for BYU. Maybe. Is I there... think B B BYU has crept the last two or three weeks, one spot each week. I think maybe BYU go goes up one more. I don't see BYU getting above number four, but that would be amazing to be top four. RPI is 23, so I'm really interested to see what seed BYU. How do you handle that? How do you balance the ranking? With ranking the RPI? has no merit. Because BYU women's soccer was in the same predicament. Yes. Rank Lower RPI, but number 12 in the ranking. Ranking has nothing to do with the NCAA tournament seeding. What seed what? would you give BYU right now if you were on that committee? Like 10. Okay. Yeah. Tenth overall. Because I have to, uh, you know, reward the teams that played a certain strength of schedule. BYU had its had its schedule locked in before they got Kerber. That, that's why this happened. And BYU, BYU's one loss. They didn't have Taylor Ballard Nixon. Yeah. It would be fantastic if BYU could be top eight because then they're hosting multiple home games, right? Now we're talking about the Final Four eight, for real. Like an eight. Just give me the eight seed. I think BYU is Elite Eight good, maybe Final Four good. That's how I think they're very good. Okay. Are you pulling your hair out in anticipation of the BYU New Mexico first round of NCAA soccer match? <laughs> <laughs> had to, we had to go there. Come on. Come on. I am not pulling my hair out. I'll uh, pull it. Frankly, it won't grow back if you. I do, Jerem. Um, no, I. Uh, I like the matchup, but I, I kind of don't like that that's where my mind went immediately when I heard No, it. of course it does. It's like Elizabeth ah. Lambert, she later did Locks of Love. She apologized. She yeah. did everything. I wanna make I wanna make that up. very clear. Yeah. Yes, that was a yes. cheap shot right out of the gate. But yeah, I was in the truck with the mountain doing the bug, which the bug is the scoreboard, right? Um, or Fox Box, because Fox did it first. Doing that in soccer is very easy. Goal. Yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> and you get paid all the very, same. Yeah, very, very easy. Fantastic. Yeah. I like the matchup. It just was like, ah, oh, man. I, I hope that doesn't steal the storyline, right? That moment. It's not the whole story. No, no, no. Okay. Just a story. Jerem, when you go shopping, are you the type of guy who gets and keeps receipts? I do initially. They pile up, and then later I throw them away because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm not taking this back. 
But yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to keep every receipt. Now I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I, a receipt hoarder. Right to the shredder. On HGTV. Right, right to the shredder. Or you just say, no thanks. <laughs> Digital. Coming up, top five wins of the football season. Where does Utah State rank in connection with Washington State? Okay. And Keanu Hill, BYU receiver, scored two touchdowns, one on a punt Wait, block. receiver? You mean punt blocker. My bad. Special team superstar. Yeah, baby. Keanu Hill joins us next. Talk about that punt block touchdown and uh, shaving his coach's head. This is BYU Sports Nation. He's doing three things. Saturday. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. What if I told you BYU women's basketball went to the NCAA tournament, won a game last year, and returned some top six scores? That team is going to be awesome, and they open the season tonight against Go. the Bisons of Lipscomb, 6 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Check it out. Love it. It's a Super Tuesday. Yes, it is. BYU basketball. Dave McCann. Super Tuesday. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I feel like we've got a super show going, and it features now my recent one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of the stars from Saturday's game. He's going to win that matchup one-on-one, -on -one, I'm telling you. They call him Kibo, Keanu Hill. Uh, we're talking about the pump lock touchdown and then shaving his coach's head, among other things. Here's BYU Sports Nation All Access with Keanu Hill. <laughs> Keanu, you scored twice last Saturday against Idaho State. The second ignited the crowd. It was late in the game. Punt block for a touchdown. Let's walk through that play. Your perspective. What did you see and how did it happen? Uh, what I saw is, like, uh, every time I got in, uh, the the end would kind of scoot out a little bit towards me, and they kind of – and on the last uh, punt return that they did, uh, they did, like, an over where the uh, receiver came over, and I acted like I was – gonna jam him up, but then I kind of came off from last second, so he didn't scoot out, so I had like that space, so I can go take the uh, ball to punt his foot. At what point did you know, I'm going to block this? Right after I passed the shield up and they didn't get towards me, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm for sure getting this block punt now. <laughs> and then the scramble is on, yeah. The scramble's on to find yeah. the ball, like, it's one thing to block it, but to recover it as well, like, not many people can yeah. pull that off. Yeah, my boy Mason, number 22, he was, like, trying to fight me for the ball as soon as we jumped <laughs> on it, man. He was just, like, saying, like, hey, you already got a touchdown, man. Let me get one, too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, but it was it was much fun afterwards with everybody on the sideline, though. Now, you sprint over to the sideline and very quickly point out that there has uh, been a deal made between you and Kyle Griffiths about shaving yeah. his head. So what, what went into that? When did that happen uh, pregame when he made that deal? He made that deal actually uh, preparing for this week, man. He actually had hella, he had a lot of confidence in us, and he already knew that we were going to come away with either a return back to the house or a block punt. But he didn't know we were going to get both of them in one play. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, it was either either it was either way. We got the best of both worlds. So as soon as I got up, got up off the ground at the touchdown, you know, I was like, "Yep, confident, get his head shaved off today." <laughs> The video is hilarious. There are a few things I want to point out specifically. The first is Kyle's in camo gear, so a shaved head kind of looked like it fit, right? It fitted perfectly with him, too, man. It looked like he was coming straight from the Army, man. It looked like he just <laughs> came out of boot camp, man, with his mustache, too, with there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Drill Sergeant Griffiths on uh, the BYU I'm football saying, coaching saying. staff. Then there's <laughs> Mason Wake, who's just hammering a – Maple bar donut, the cougar tail in the back. What what's going on with Mason Wake? That, that's a big man, man. He gotta eat. He gotta eat, especially after a big game like that, bro. <laughs> it's my boy. Oh, so much fun. BYU's eight and two now. You're number 15 in the college football playoff poll, 15th in the coaches poll, 14th in the AP rankings. During a bye week, it, it's probably a little more understandable to let some of that national rhetoric sneak in. So where, where do you stand on that and how much you pay attention to that stuff, especially during a bye week? Uh, just to, like, not get too comfortable, I would say. You know, make sure we're staying right, getting our healthy, our bodies right for the next game. And uh, we're really looking forward to the next game, too. You know, we, even though we have this bye week, you know, we're not going to let it, like, be like a little distraction for us. So we're just going to stay focused on what we need to do, stay healthy, and get ready for the next game. So in the post game, everybody kept bringing up Kibo, and we used our contextual clues. Okay, that's Keanu Hill. So where does the nickname Kibo come from? 
just when I was a little kid, man, you know, just growing up playing sports, you know, everybody would be like, hey, what's his name? What's his name? My dad would tell him Keanu, like, and they'd be like, oh, like Keanu Reeves and stuff like that. And then, like, a couple minutes later, they'd be like, let's go Kinu or Kanu or anything like that. So he would just <laughs> tell him just to call me Kibo just to keep it short, man. <laughs> Which do you prefer? Do you like your actual name, Keanu, or do you like it when your team is called you Kibo? I like Keanu, but I like it when people call me Kibo, though. <laughs> okay. For the record, we have been calling you Keanu for a number of years, okay? So, uh, but we might throw in a little bit to mix it up. Keanu Hill or Kibo is with us on BYU Sports Nation, <laughs> BYU receiver. You watched a bunch of your teammates seemingly take that final walk. Gunnar Romney's included in that. Neil Pau said he was going to be playing his uh, potentially his final game, potentially be honored. Um, and then there is obviously Samson Nakua. So where do you see your opportunity as a receiver developing in the years moving forward? Uh, you know, just to sharpen my skills, like as, as I always, you know, keep my head down and just keep pushing forward, man. You know, I really look up to those guys, Neil, Gunner, and Samson, you know, they kind of like bring that leadership and energy, especially Samson, you know, with his very hyper self, man. You know, just, just love to have that in our room, man. It will be missed, but uh, just going to just keep my head down and keep moving forward and see how I can sharpen my skills. What do the Nakuas do for the wide receiver room? Oh, a lot. They bring, like, a lot of energy, a lot of confidence in that room, man, really. And it brings a lot of – just, like, a lot of leadership, man. Very vocal, happy, all that stuff. They always try to keep us in our best selves always. So, really, really enjoy them having – really having them here. For you, what's the best part of having a bye week, especially in a year that has just been a grind of a schedule? Just to get my body back right, you know, had a big game last Saturday, you know, kind of bump some bruises around. So just trying to get my body back right, you know, stay healthy as possible as I can. As you look ahead to Georgia Southern and then USC with an opportunity for 10 wins in the regular season, where does BYU collectively as a team need to be better so that you can close out with a double-figure win column in the regular season? Mm, just to just really just focus on ourselves, if anything, because uh, if we focus on ourselves, I know that we, that us as a, as a whole, can come together as a team to get a W out. So just really just working, focusing on ourselves and focusing on what we need to do to bring a W home. Okay, and we'll finish with this. What needs to happen for Keanu Hill to get the ball more from Jaron Hall? <laughs> uh, just, you know, that's not really my decision. It's really Jaron Hall's decision. You know, if he goes to his reads and he sees I have the best matchup, then he's going he to give me the ball for sure. But, you know, we have a lot of weapons out there, man. So we got like me, Samson, uh, uh, Gunner, Neil, and uh, Puka and all them. So, you know, it's going to be tough. But I'm just going to, you know, every time I get in, just make the best of what I got. Are you always open, Keanu? Always, always. <laughs> I love that about wide receivers. Hey, it's great to talk with you. Congratulations on a big performance, the two touchdowns against Idaho State. Enjoy your rest. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma so you can heal up, and we'll look forward to seeing you back on the field against Georgia Southern. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Keanu Hill, BYU Sports Nation All Access, one-on-one -on -one with the wide receiver. Two touchdowns last Saturday, and, Jerem, uh, you and I were just talking a moment ago. You like his game. No, we were listening intently. What are you talking about? Well, we've heard the interview. <laughs> we've seen it. We're good. Yes. But we, we like his game and uh, his potential. If Neil Poe decides it's time to move on, like to, to get in there and replace him. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a sec for a guy to get ready, you know, a year or two or whatever. And then as a junior, you're like, all right, now it's time to perform. Keanu's doing that in this last half of the season, which is great. His uncle's Roy Williams, who played for the Cowboys. The receiver, I believe, not the defensive back. So uh, he's got the genes, which is pretty cool. Okay, coming up, our first double-down picks of the season. What is that? We'll explain. And it's Top 5 Tuesday, and we're looking at the top five wins of the season for BYU football. How would you rank them? We'll give you our list next. This is BYU Sports Nation. I wonder what's one. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On the latest BYU Sports Nation, right now! Kiki Solano taking you to Lavelle Edwards Stadium one last time this season. Check it out on the BYU Sun Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook account. Show's always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's go Top 5 Tuesday presented yes. by Delta Airlines. 
keep climbing. We're looking at the top five wins of the BYU football season to this point. How would you rank them? We're about to tell you how we rank them. Start us off, Jerem. Number five, Utah State. Wow. BYU is ranked 4-0, ranked number 13, trying to get to 5-0 back-to-back season. Malik Moore, second best play of the season, in my opinion, had an interception in the first half. Cougars were up 24-13 at halftime, thanks to two rushing touchdowns from Tyler Algier. Here it is. Oh, left-handed. Are you serious? Second best play of the year by far. First is obvious, okay? Tyler Algier, Tom Alec Chop. Tyler Algier, a couple touchdowns there. Tyler, uh, Isaac Rex, touchdown from Baylor Romney, who gets knocked out of the game at halftime. So Jacob Conover comes in, does a first-team All-American job of handing off to Tyler Algier, who had 218 yards and three touchdowns. Cougars won 34-20, kept the old wagon wheel. It's a credit to Utah State that they're on this list because beating Arizona in Vegas, I would have thought yeah, it would probably be a top-five win. Nope. No. They're not good. Utah State's 7-2. Number four, Washington State. BYU in Pullman, one of their Power Five wins, and this one in true road format. Fourth win over a Pac-12 team in the fourth try this season. Tyler Algier, 191 yards on 32 carries, two touchdowns. Malik Moore had another interception. He probably got an NIL deal after this game. BYU moved to 6-2 after they beat the Cougars on the Palouse. Number three, Arizona State. This was BYU's first home game as a ranked team against another ranked team. Since 09 at home, Cougars forced three turnovers, fumble on the opening kickoff, picks from Max Tooley, Malik Moore as well, set up three first-half touchdowns. Then late in the third quarter, Jaron Hall is picked off, but Tyler Algier made the play of the year by chasing the interceptor, punching the ball out, and Hall recovered. This is an incredible play. Peter Romney came in for an injured Jaron Hall, threw a touchdown to seal the win, 27 to 17. I'm stalling because I want to see the tomahawk chop one more time. <laughs> And it's too far down in the highlights. Here it is. Oh, here, here it is. Here we'll see it. It's just so good. Okay. It's just so good. What's this cat's name again? Chase Robertson? Tyler Algier? Good Chase luck. Is, no, Merlin Robertson. No. Sorry. No wizardry here. Number two, BYU. Number 25 team in the country at the time they welcomed Bronco Mendenhall in Virginia into the Wait, what? Valid Word Stadium. 66 to 49. Incredible. The shootout, we wondered if BYU could win if they got into it. Yeah. They can win it, and they did. Also, Tyler Algier ran for 266 yards and tied a BYU record of five rushing touchdowns. Jaron Hall was quietly amazing. 66 points is the most BYU's ever scored against a Power 5 opponent, which is why it's number two on the list, which means there's only one other game that could top Virginia, Jaron. Final host, Utah, September 11th. BYU ended the nine-game losing streak and the 12-year drought. Oh, Dave McCann's flyover happened. BYU beat Utah 26-17. Cougars were unranked. Utah was number 21. Two early forced turnovers. Got the lead. Jaron Hall threw touchdown passes to a couple, uh, three different players in this one. Samson Nakua, one of them. He was great. Then it seemed like almost everybody in Utah County stormed the field after that. It was a glorious night where BYU ended the streak. And really, we thought, okay, BYU is good. And then they continued to climb from there. All right, it's our first double down segment of the BYU basketball season now before we close out this show where both Jerem and I give you two predictions as to what we think will happen in tonight's game against Cleveland State. One point is awarded for each correct answer and a bonus point is awarded if you get both correct for a possibility of three points. Okay. Okay. All right. We're doubling down. Jerem, what are your two double down predictions? One, Tijon Lucas will put up a combined plus 22 in points, rebounds, assists. Okay. Just 22, not plus 22, just 22. Okay. He averaged 25 last year. So first game here, he'll do that. Two, Caleb Lohner and Gideon George will combine for 13 plus rebounds. They averaged about 11 last year. So okay. We'll go north of that. I like those. Number one for me, BYU will lead by 10-plus at halftime tonight. Mm -hmm. They're a 14-and-a-half point favorite in the game overall. So I think they get out to a quick start tonight. 10-plus lead at halftime. At number two, after shooting six for 19 from the free throw line against Colorado Christian, I think BYU will figure it out and shoot 67%. Okay. So just make two out of every three. Yeah, Can we do go. that from the free let's throw go. line? Our question of the day, which team will end the season ranked higher, BYU basketball or BYU football? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at 86 WI Coog says, football, if question would have been asked in August, answer would have been basketball. Oh, yeah. But we're 10 of 13 games into the BYU football season with a good chance of football season ending 11-2 and two and ranked as high as top 10. Basketball would have to do something done just one time in history, the Elite Eight. Yeah, pretty crazy. 
Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Gideon George for the shoe drive coming up Friday. Women's soccer four seed, women's volleyball in five. And our guy Noah Reeb is going on Ellen today. Go, Noah! What's up, Noah? Can't wait to watch it. I've seen him at a bunch of BYU events. He's an elite fan. All right, our thanks to uh, today's guests, uh, of course, Isaiah Kafusi and Keanu Hill. Sorry to Dennis. No time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Let's shout out to Rich Kafusi. We'll see you for BYU basketball at 6 Eastern. Go Cougs!